verse from today's gospel. I lay down my life for my sheep, and other sheep I have, they're not of this fold. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus Christ is the eternal shepherd who sacrificed his life for his sheep, as we heard in today's gospel. He is the one and only true shepherd, just as he is the only one and true mediator. And as there are other mediators, there are other sheep who participate in the eternal shepherd. These other shepherds are temporal ministers who participate in the redemption, the continuing on of the redemption which our Lord had won for us at his crucifixion. So our Lord raises up many shepherds to continue this work of redemption. And one such person is Saint Leopold. There are obviously many great shepherds throughout the history of the church. I'd like to talk to, about, talk to you about one particular great shepherd and he was named Saint Leopold of the 20th century. He was born in 1866 and he died in 1942. Leopold is his religious name. He was born Bogdan Mandic from the old former Yugoslavia. He was one of 12 children. He was the last of 12 and he was born quite frail and as we would say today, he was with disabilities. He was short, even in his adulthood, he, was, he stood four foot five tall. He had a, he, started, he, he, he suffered from ill health and particularly suffered from stuttering. Uh, but despite all his disabilities that he had, his ailments and stuttering and his small frame, he had a keen intellect. Growing up in the former Yugoslavia, he was surrounded by many Orthodox churches. And at the age of 16, he, because of his familiarity with his friends who were Orthodox, he made a, a, his first vow, if you will, and he wrote a note to himself saying, I'll consecrate myself for the salvation of all the beloved dissidents, referring to the, those of the Orthodox churches. I will become a missionary to them. So even at the early age of 16, he had this idea that he wanted to convert the Orthodox churches, make one to bring him back to the fold of Christ. In order to fulfill his aspirations, he joined the Capuchin Order, who had a mission in his hometown in, in Montenegro, the former Yugoslavia. And so he, he asked to be joined, joined the, the order, and the superior, when he saw him, he saw this obviously young, small, and uh, well, frail young man. He wasn't really impressed, but obviously, as we'll see later on, he came to impress him um, because of his great spiritual aspirations. Anyway, he, he joined, he was sent to Italy to study for philosophy in, in Padua. And even in his learning of philosophy and theology, he made another vow to, to bring back, to be the reconciler between the East and the West. He wrote another note to himself as a, uh, a, study, a student of theology. He said, I, brother Leopold, his religious name, have understood the plan of divine grace I've been called to the salvation of my people, the Slavonic people. So the people from the old former Yugoslavia are called Slavs, as well as the Ukrainians and Russians. So they were the Slav southern Slavonic people. So he had this great desire to go back to his home homeland, former Yugoslavia, to Montenegro, in order to convert these people who were out of the fold of Christ. Eventually he went on to Venice to study for the priesthood and in, in the seminary in Venice, he learned different Slavonic languages in view of going back to, to his homeland in order to convert them. When he was ordained in 1890, at the age of 24, his superiors asked him what would he like to do with his, um, as, as a, his ministry, what was his preferred ministry, and he wanted to go back to former Yugoslavia in order to convert the Orthodox Christians, but they denied his, his application, saying that he had a frail, Constitution, he's, he suffered from stomach ailments, poor eyesight, and arthritis. And, and because he, he couldn't preach properly because of stuttering, they, his uh, request was denied. But St. Leopold, his disappointment was not a setback to him. Rather, he made another vow to dedicate all his actions of his life for the people who were outside the church, particularly those in the Orthodox churches. And hence, his called and or labeled one of the apostle of unity because of this desire. 
as we learned, he never went back to actually to the missions. And but he is you know, one of the, the great uh, patrons for Apostle Unity, just as Saint Teresa of Lisieux, who never left, never, never left the convent, but she was at one stage the, one of the patrons of New Zealand as a, a missionary. So she had this great aspiration and desires for the missions. So Leopold made this, despite this, this step back, he made a vow, another vow, and this is his vow, to devote all the actions of my life for the return of separated Orientals to Catholic unity. And this would prepare him for the next phase of life. So he, he went through, he made his vows as a, as a young man and as a student and as a priest and was denied that, but he said his superior sent him on a new journey and that journey was to become a confessor. And so, as a, even as a confessor, he was able to still have these great aspirations for the missions. One particular day when he was sent to Padua to begin his ministry of becoming a confessor, one of the brothers asked him, Father Leopold, you don't talk about the East, going to the East anymore. And he's, he replied, yes, I, it's, it's true. A couple of days ago, I received a message from our Lord. He went to, receive, he went to give Holy Communion to a very holy lady, and after her thanksgiving, she came up to me and said to me that she has a message from Jesus for me. And the message was this, the Lord said to her to tell Father Leopold, your orient is each of the souls you assist by hearing the confessions. Now this was his new mission. So Father Leopold said to his brother, you see my dear friend, my mission now is not going over to the east, the orient, but to do missions with the confession to the souls. So for 34 years, St. Leopold's mission was to hear confessions in the town of Padua. He would sit in the confessional for 12 to 15 hours a day. This was his whole mission, and obviously he, didn't, he couldn't be with the community for most of the time because he was in the confessional. And so he dedicated that time in the confessional for obviously to souls and to bring them to Christ, but also uh, for the union of Orthodox churches uh, with the Latin Church, the Roman Catholic Church. So this bent, being a little priest, heard confessions for tens of thousands of people over the course of 34 years. And he became very popular, obviously. He confessed or heard confessions of professors, students, politicians, peasants, religious and priests. And, if, and one of them were the future Pope John Paul I. And despite being hidden in his dark confessional for these, all these hours of the day and for so long, he was greatly admired by everyone. And in the confessional, every penitent experienced the mercy of God and the kindness of the priests, which can be illustrated in the story. One day, Father Leopold was sitting in his confessional and there's a man standing outside the confessional and say, imagine the man to come over to the confessional. So the man, a bit hesitant, went to the confessional and told him to come in and sit down. So he came in and sat down. And he said to the man, I know you didn't want to go to confession. And the man nodded, nodded, said, yes, I don't want to confession. Go go to confession. He says, but I've, I've waited for you, and Jesus has been waiting for you. He says, would you like to make a confession? And the man replied, well, didn't reply, actually, there was a silence. So Father Leopold said, Leopold said, don't worry, I'll tell you a confession. So he went through the whole conf his confession and told him what he did wrong, and the man confirmed that, and affirmed that, yes, this is true, all these things that Father Leopold revealed to him were his sins. So at the end of the confession, the Leopold said to him, are you sorry for your sins? And he asked, the man replied, yes, I'm very sorry for my sins. And Father Leopold went on to say, do you have a firm purpose of amendment? Are you going to do them again? And the man replied, no, Father, I'll not do them again. And so he ended by saying, okay, thank you for coming. This was a wonderful time. Goodbye. And this is this is the kind of the nature of, of the of the man. Obviously, it's quite comical to us, but he was a very gentle in the confessional, and this is why a lot of people were really attracted to him. Some of his confreres, though, were not happy with his soft approach in the confessional, and some of them accused him of soft penances. And his reply was this: He said, "I give my penance, my penitents, those who come to confession, only small penances because I do the rest myself." And it was witnessed by a lot of his confreres that he would spend hours in, in, in prayer at night for his penitents. 
There was a moment in uh, where he thought that he was going to go over to the east. It was announced that Father Leopold would go back to Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia, there to hear confessions in the Slavonic tongue. Uh, when he heard this news, he was, he was overwhelmed. Like for 40 years, he'd been exiled from his home, and now there's this opportunity to go back to his homeland to hear confession of his people. Uh, but within a week, when the people of Padua heard about that, heard about the transfer of him leaving Padua to go to uh, not Montenegro or Croatia, sorry, they uh, besieged the superiors. A lot of people besieged the, the, the house and told them, told the superiors to bring him back to Padua. So unfortunately for St. Leopold, he only spent a week in his home, in home country and was sent back to Padua uh, to his dismay. One of his superiors told him in a joking manner, um, obviously St. Pa Anthony Padua won't be back here. Uh, so he humbly came back to Padua to, to continue his mission on hearing confessions for the rest of his life. At the end of his life, he contracted cancer, and this is why he's one of the patron saints of, of uh, people who suffer cancer. He's, he was able to um, endure that, as well as obviously listen, hearing confessions for the rest of his life. In 1942, though, he, when he was preparing for Holy Mass, he collapsed, and his brothers took him to his cell, where they gave him the last rites. And as they were singing the Hail Holy Queen, the Salva Regina, with the words, O Clement, a loving and sweet Virgin Mary, Saint Leopold died a holy death. It's an amazing story, really, of a, a good sh a shepherd who had such, such a concern about, obviously, those who are outside the fold. And this is the, the pattern was, was laid before for us by our Lord in today's Gospel. The pattern to be a shepherd is precisely to be to lay down your life for the sheep. And this obviously extends not only to the, the priests and bishops and cardinals and the Pope, it also extends to, to parents and to those who have an authority. The, this, the, the pattern that they have to they have for the, those who are under them is to do all in their power to lead them to the truth, obviously, to feed them well, to feed them with the faith, and if it, if it comes to it, to lay down their life for the truth and for their family and friends. One reflection upon about the person himself, he was a person of, as we say in, in today's terms, who had a lot of disabilities, but he didn't let that get in the way of him becoming a saint. So when we reflect upon he himself and his, and his infirmities, what excuse do we have, really, when we think about ourselves? Why are we saints? Like, he, he became a great saint, despite the fact that he was held back by his disabilities. So it's a really a, a great saint for us to reflect upon and to pray to and ask for the graces to become great saints as he did, and, and obviously great shepherds, a shepherd like he was. There's many miracles, obviously, I'd like to share one, one last miracle a man who was, he, who St. Leopold knew, his name's Alberto Breden, and they're good friends. This man had been injured in the First World War, and his, he twisted his spine, he, he basically couldn't walk. Um, and so Father Leopold sent a note one day saying that, one day you'll walk, um, just wait for the time. So at that time, Father Leopold had died, and four years later, uh, Alberto was in his bed in the hospital, and he had this inner voice say to him, get up and walk. And so, he got up and walked, and not only that, he ran around the room and ran around the hospital to everyone's surprise, because obviously he hadn't walked since uh, for 40 years. And he, so he ran around and um, shouting joy and amazement, and to the amazement of everyone else. Who are. There are many, many other beautiful stories of people being healed uh, through for cancer and also for, for any sickness. There are a lot of words of wisdom. I'd like to share one particular phrase from him, uh, which really sums up, sums up who he was as a, as a saint and as a shepherd. He said, of, uh, he said once a priest, a priest must die from apostolic hard work. There is no other death worthy of a priest. And it's true. It's, 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 uh, this really sums up him as a saint and a shepherd. And it sums up what, what we should see in shepherds. And being Good Shepherd Sunday, I think it's a time for us to really pray for the Pope who needs prayers, pray for the cardinals and bishops that they may be proper shepherds, they may live their life, uh, and, and the blueprint is in our Lord Jesus Christ himself in today's gospel, that they may stand up for the truth, stand up for him, stand up for his church. Pray for the shepherds that they may lay down their life for the sake of the truth and the sake of the, the church and the sheep. Holy Mother Mary, Mother of the Church, Pray for us and pray for our shepherds 
Saint Leopold, pray for us, and Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.